Let me introduce the first of three papers that Russell is writing in conjunction with the Fund Executives Association Limited in Australia. I'm Don Ezra, the co-chair of Global Consulting at Russell Investments. You know, Australia is generally seen as having one of the best retirement systems in the world. And it's still immature, it's not even halfway through a full cycle of employee contributions. But it's a good time to take a look at future retirement needs given the demographic wave that's moving through the system. The first paper looks at gaps in the solution set for retirement income and concepts that can be used in building better member outcomes. Then the second paper will be a blueprint for how super funds can actually build a more comprehensive solution. And finally, the third paper will focus on how to create DB-like outcomes for DC systems, more diversified portfolios and better longevity insurance. Hi, my name is Michael Clark. I'm the Managing Director of Industry and Government Funds in the Sydney office. Um, in this second section of the paper, uh, we turn to the characteristics and the financial needs and wants of retirees globally. Um, we find that there are two overarching characteristics of retirees. Um, the first is that they've accumulated inadequate savings for retirement and the second is that the risk aversion of retirees goes up significantly compared to, to pre-retirees. Um, turning first to um, the lack of retirement savings, um, the Australian market is a very good example. In Australia the system is designed to work um, for, for the 40 to 50 year working life of the average worker. Um, right now the system has only been operating for just over 20 years, so workers have not accumulated anywhere near um, the ending balances that, that, that would be needed for you know, a, a dignified retirement. Turning to the high level of risk aversion of retirees, we find that they are five times more risk averse than in the pre-retirement phase. Um, not only do retirees face market risk, but they also face longevity risk, liquidity risk, health risk, provider risk, a whole array of new risks that they did not face in the pre or, or faced in a less significant way in the pre-retirement uh, phase of investing. And if we turn now to the, the Australian market and research we've done here uniquely, um, we find other um, further um, you know, factors that drive retirees. Um, some of these include that retirees really start to think about, or workers start to think about retiring from about age 50. So it's very important to engage with members from about that age to start talking and thinking and planning for retirement. Um, they also uh, are very concerned about you know, getting advice from their fund about retirement and, and would like their fund to be a one-stop shop um, of solutions for all things about retirement. All of the research about the financial needs and wants and the requirements of retirees leads us to the final conclusion that retirement is about the individual and planning for the individual circumstances right leading up to retirement and through the retirement phase. Hello. Section 2 of Russell's paper, Retirement Solutions, Gaps in the State of the Art, consider the demand side of the post-retirement industry. In section 3, we turn to a corresponding survey of available product and retirement offerings, the supply side of the problem. My name is Graham Harmon, and I'm the Director of Capital Markets Research for Russell in Australia. And as I look around the local post-retirement landscape, I see no shortage of products aspiring to retiree relevance. On the investment side, there are plenty of cash, fixed interest and capital stable products available as well as high dividend, income oriented share options. In terms of longevity protection, there is also a lot of talk and a certain amount of product purporting to offer annuity streams and ongoing retirement incomes. But when we measure up the offerings against the needs and expectations, the gaps remain fairly stark. Cash and fixed interest products address liquidity needs and retiree risk aversion, but have small chance of redressing adequacy shortfalls and inflation risks through the long years of retirement. At the other end of the risk scale, high yield equity funds hold out the promise of meaningful returns, but at the cost of an unpalatable exposure to the roller coaster of listed share markets. In terms of longevity insurance, most products described in Australia as annuities are in fact either savings vehicles or term certain payout vehicles, neither of which satisfies the need for an income that is guaranteed to last as long as the retiree lives. There are other gaps as well. In the investment space, 
We believe that more needs to be done in addressing the, count the realities of counterparty risk and there are a whole of retirement gaps relating to member needs and expectations regarding such necessities as retirement housing and healthcare management. Section 4 of our paper harnesses ideas and concepts which we believe can address these gaps. Hi, I'm Tim Furlan, Director of Superannuation at Russell Investments. Today I'll be talking about Section 4 of our paper, Retirement Solutions, Gaps in the State of the Art. In Section 4 we start to have a look at some of the concepts that might be available to help us with filling some of those gaps. So we have a look at different ways of spending in retirement, investment risk and longevity risk, or the idea of uh, living too long. The investment concepts that we have a look at include the 10-30-60 rule. So this is the idea that 60 cents in every dollar you spend in retirement comes from investment earnings after retirement. So investment during retirement is really important. We have a look at some other concepts like radically diversified portfolios. Can we get some benefit from diversification that will help smooth out outcomes in retirement? customised asset allocations and life cycle strategies. So we're looking at the risk that comes with investing in retirement. Looking at longevity, longevity is the risk that you live longer than your money does. Uh, now there are some ways that we can deal with longevity risk that we have a look at in the paper. We have a look at traditional fixed annuities, um, variable annuities that are more equity linked and longevity pools. The issue with each of these solutions around longevity risk is bringing in the concept of diversification. In the same way that we talk about diversification in investments, you can diversify across a group of people to reduce your longevity risks. The problem with longevity risk is that it's an area that's not particularly well understood. And so the solutions are one that are probably expensively priced at the moment and in need of further development. What we've found is that the risks around longevity increase with age. So if you were to purchase an annuity at say 85 and you were to live longer than three quarters of the other 85 year olds, um, what you would get as a return on that annuity is something like 10% above CPI. So much better than any sort of investment you can get on the market, um, not without taking on a huge amount of risk. And the reason for that is the variations in outcomes when it comes to longevity increase as you get older. So there it is, the gaps and the concepts. Now look for the second paper which will provide a blueprint for super funds to build improved retirement solutions for better member outcomes. Thank you.